Welcome back! Today our topic is excitable tissues and I'm going to be talking about basic principles of electricity as well. First of all, definitions, some definitions. First, what is irritability? Irritability is the ability of all biosystem or cells to answer the stimulation action of external and internal environment by a change in metabolism. This property is common for all cells in the body. Next term is excitability. Excitability is the property of cell fluid that permits them to react to stimuli from the environment by a change in membrane potential or generation of an action potential, or the capacity of cells to respond to stimuli, or the ability to receive and respond to a stimulus, only applicable to nerve, muscles, and certain secretory cells. Excitable tissues. These are tissues which are capable of generation and transmission of electrochemical impulses along the membrane. Excitation is the process of generating action potential. Remember, please, these terms, they are very, very significant in physiology. What is a stimulus? A stimulus anything that excites any change in the environment. There are several types of stimulus. First, electrical, second, mechanical, and third, chemical. Not any stimulus is able to produce a reaction. This stimulus should be strong enough and last for some period of time. The minimal intensity of the stimulus able to produce reaction from the cell is called three shot. Between the intensity, strength of the stimulus and its duration, there is an indirect relation. First, strength, intensity. The stimulus must be strong enough in order to produce reaction. There is no action potential if the stimulus is not strong enough, not reach threshold. This is the first law of excitable tissues. This is the force law or law all or none. First law. Second law is duration. The stimulus should last for some period of time in order to produce reaction. Sometimes there is a stimuli but not active for a long time. The time law. The force time law. And third law is velocity law or the accommodation law. It is the speed by which the excitation occurs, the law of force gradient. These are three laws of excitable tissues. Electrically active cell membranes. As you learned in, this, uh, in the chapter on cells, our previous chapter, the cell membrane is primarily responsible for regulating what can cross the membrane and what stays on only one side. The cell membrane is a phospholipid bilayer, so only substances that can pass directly through the hydrophobic core can diffuse through unaided. Charged particles which are hydrophilic, by definition, cannot pass through the cell membrane without what assistance. Transmembrane proteins uh, 
specifically channel proteins, make this possible. Several passive transport channels, as well as active transport pumps, are necessary to generate a transmembrane potential. And an action potential of special interest is the carrier protein referred to is the sodium-potassium pump that moves sodium ions out of a cell and potassium ions into a cell, thus regulating ion concentration on both sides of the cell membrane. Cell membrane and transmembrane proteins. The cell membrane is composed of a phospholipid bilayer and has many transmembrane proteins, including different types of channel proteins that serve as ion channels. The sodium-potassium pump requires energy in the form of the adenosine triphosphate, ATP, so it is also referred to as an ATPase. The concentration of sodium is higher outside the cell than inside. And the concentration of potassium is higher inside the cell than outside. That means that this pump is moving the ions against the concentration gradients for sodium and potassium, which is why it requires energy. In fact, the pump basically maintains those concentration gradients. Ion channels are pores that allow specific charged particles to cross the membrane in response to an exciting concentration gradient. Ion channels don't always freely allow ions to diffuse across the membrane. Some are opened by certain events, meaning the channels are gated. Some ion channels are always open, called leak channels. Some are open or closed, called gated channels. A voltage-gated channel is a channel that responds to changes in the electrical properties of the membrane in which it's embedded. Normally, the inner portion of the membrane is at a negative voltage. When that voltage becomes less negative, the channel begins to allow ions to cross the membrane. The membrane potential or the resting potential. The electrical state of the cell membrane can have several variations. These are all variations in the membrane potential. A potential is a distribution of charge across the cell membrane measured in millivolts. The standard is to compare the inside of the cell relative to the outside. So, the membrane potential is a value representing the charge on the intracellular side of the membrane based on the outside being zero, measuring charge across a membrane with a voltmeter. A recording electrode is inserted into the cell and the reference electrode is outside the cell. By comparing the charge measured by these two electrodes, the transmembrane voltage is determined. It's conventional to express that value for the cytosol relative to the outside. The concentration of ions in extracellular and intracellular fluids is largely balanced with a net neutral charge. However, a slight difference in charge occurs right at the membrane surface, both internally and externally. That is the difference in this very limited region that has all the power in neurons and muscle cells to generate electrical signals, including action potentials. Before these electrical signals can be described, the resting state of the membrane must be explained. When the cell is, rest, is at rest, 
ions are distributed across the membrane in a very predictable way. The concentration of sodium outside, as we said, the cell is 10 times greater than the concentration inside. Also, the concentration of potassium inside the cell is greater than outside. The cytosol contains a high concentration of anions in the form of phosphate ions and negatively charged proteins. Large anions are a component of the inner cell membrane, including specialized phospholipids and proteins associated with the inner leaflet on the membrane. Leaflet is a term used for one side of the lipid uh, bilayer membrane. Leaflet. The negative charge is localized in the large anions. With the ions distributed across the membrane, at this concentration, the difference in charge is measured at minus 70 millivolts. The value described as the resting membrane potential. Minus 70 millivolts. Liquid channels allow sodium to slow, slowly move into the cell or potassium to slowly move out. And the sodium-potassium pump restore them. This may appear to be a waste of energy, but each has a role in maintaining the membrane potential. So, this is the rest or membrane potential. The action potential. A resting uh, membrane potential describes the steady state of the cell, which is a dynamic process that is balanced by ion leakage and uh, ion pumping. Without any outside influence, it will not change. To get an electrical signal started, the membrane potential has to change. This starts with a channel opening for sodium. Channels open for sodium in the membrane. Because the concentration of sodium, as we said, is higher outside the cell than inside, factor of uh, 10, ions will rush into the cell that are driven largely by the concentration gradient. Because sodium is a positively charged ion, it will change the relative voltage immediately inside the cell relative to immediately outside. The resting potential is the state of the membrane at a voltage of minus 70 millivolts, so the sodium cation Entering the cell will cause it to become less negative. Minus 70, less negative. Minus 60, minus 50, minus 40, etc. This is known as depolarization. Meaning the membrane potential moves toward zero. The concentration gradient for sodium is so strong that it will continue to enter the cell even after the membrane potential has become zero, so that the voltage immediately around the pore begins to become positive, plus 10, plus 20, etc. The electrical gradient also plays a role as negative proteins below the membrane attract the sodium ion. The membrane potential will reach plus 30 millivolts by the time sodium has entered the cell. As the membrane potential reaches plus 30 millivolts, other voltage-gated channels are opening in the membrane. These channels are specific for the potassium ion. 
a concentration gradient acts on potassium as well. As potassium starts to leave the cell, taking a positive charge with it, the membrane potential begins to move back toward its resting voltage. This is called repolarization. Depolarization and repolarization, meaning that the membrane voltage moves back toward the minus 70 millivolts value of the resting membrane potential. Repolarization returns the membrane potential to the minus 70 millivolts value that indicates the resting potential, but it actually overshoots that value. Potassium continues to leave the cell for a short while and the membrane potential becomes more negative, resulting in the hyperpolarization of a shoot. Then the channel closes again and the membrane can return to the resting potential because of the ongoing activity on the uh, activity of the non-gated channels and the sodium potassium pump graph on the, of action potential plotting voltage measured across the cell membrane against time the action potential begins with depolarization as you can see followed by repolarization which goes past the resting potential into hyperpolarization and finally the membrane returns to rest to membrane potential value of minus 70 millivolts all of this takes place within approximately 2 milliseconds while an action potential is in progress another one cannot be initiated that effect is referred to as the refractory period these there are two phases of the refractory period or two types of refractory period the absolute refractory period and the relative refractory period during the absolute phase another action potential will not start this is because of the inactivation gate of the voltage gated sodium channel once that channel is back to its resting conformation less than minus 55 millivolts a new action potential could be started but only by a stronger stimulus than the one that initiated the current action potential this is because of the flow of potassium out of the cell because that iron is rushing out any sodium that tries to enter will not depolarize the cell so today we discussed about uh, excitable tissues nervous muscle and secretory tissues and about membrane and action potentials plotting voltage measured across the cell membrane against time the events of the action potential can be related to specific changes in the membrane voltage first at rest the membrane voltage is minus 70 millivolts second the membrane begins to depolarize when an external stimulus is applied third the membrane voltage begins a rapid rise toward plus 30 millivolts the membrane voltage starts to return to a negative value fourth fifth repolarization continues past the resting membrane voltage resulting in hyperpolarization and the last the membrane voltage returns to the resting value shortly after hyperpolarization that's it see you later bye bye 